Previously, Mrs. Reed worked with the class to analyze a writing model for responding to two sources. In this video, she shares a new prompt with students and guides them to gather text evidence from the same two sources to answer the new prompt. When writing to two sources, students are required to find relevant evidence from both sources to use in their response. When gathering evidence, they must consider similarities and differences in the two texts. As you watch, think about how you will analyze the writing prompt with students. How will you support students to gather and integrate evidence from two sources? What types of scaffolding will your students need to complete the task? So here's our prompt. What did reading A New Birth of Freedom add to the information you learned from Abe's Honest Words, The Life of Abraham Lincoln? Use details from both texts to support your answer. Raise your hand if you learned something from reading Abe's Honest Words. Raise your hand if you learned something from A New Birth of Freedom. So does it want us to compare these? Yes. 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 Does it want us to contrast these? Yes. Yeah, they want to know what's different about reading A New Birth of Freedom. So they want you to tell what you learned here, but they also want you to tell you what did you learn in the other text that was different. So we have read the prompt. We know what they want us to do. So let's like start looking for text evidence. Let's start with, which one do you think we should start with? Should we start with the new birth of freedom or Abe's honest words? Abe's honest words. All right, sounds like that's the majority. We're going to go to Abe's honest words, and I want you to start looking through and finding me evidence with a page number of something that you learned. Something that you learned. In a previous writing lesson, Mrs. Reed scaffolded the evidence gathering by using a guided approach. Now, she feels students are ready to gather evidence independently. Do that now. Did you guys find text evidence? Does everybody have some? I do. Do you have some? I do. You do? Do you have some, Amanda? We're all on this page there. Cody, what did you learn? On page 253, I learned that the North had to fight the South to bring it back into the Union. Good. Did you notice how he told us the page number? Yes. Did he give us the text evidence? Did he actually go back into the text and read that? Yes. Cody, you did exactly what you're supposed to do. So the North and the South are at war. Okay, I'm going to add that. Mrs. Reed models for students how to paraphrase and organize evidence from each source, including page numbers. You can also have students use a graphic organizer to record their evidence. Abe's Honest Words, page 253. Remember, are we, do we have to write in a complete sentence here? No. No, we're just taking notes. North and South are at war. Who wants to give me more text evidence? Araceli. He, he lost the election when he ran, but people liked what he said. And then on page 248, he ran again and he... That time he won, and he ran three more times, and he won. Okay. So he had and to have perseverance, didn't he? Because yeah. he didn't win the first time. He didn't just run and lose and say, that's it, I quit. There's a lot of things that we actually may have learned about Abraham Lincoln in that text. But let's focus on our essential question. How can words lead to change? So we're wanting to know what words he was saying and the change. So we need to make our focus more on the change that he was wanting, which we said had to do with slavery. So let's try. What is it that we've learned about Abraham Lincoln that has to do with his words or the change that he wanted? What else would you say, Christopher? Something that I learned about Abe's honest words is that he, um, he was fighting for to, he was fighting to end slavery. Okay, so he was using his words to end slavery. So now let's go to a new birth of freedom. 
So I'm going to skip a line and I'm going to write my new source. I want you to go back and find what is something that you learned here that was not in this text. Mrs. Reed guides students to see how the evidence from the two sources should fit together to answer the prompt. So we've told what we've learned in the first text. What did you learn that's different or you can add to from the first one? So start finding your text evidence. If you find it, share with someone at your table and I'll give you about two or three minutes and then we'll share those. One, two. Raise your hand if you can give me evidence of text. What text evidence can you give me? Yes, Zai. What else did we learn from A New Birth of Freedom? He said to honor a soldier, to honor the soldiers that, who have died. And what page do you, did you read that on? 262. Okay, I totally agree. If there's something else that you want to add as your text evidence, please do so. If you don't want to add one of these two things, then add something different. Now it's your turn. Think about how you will prepare students to write to two sources. What challenges might students encounter when using multiple sources? How will you support them as they gather text evidence? Reach out to discuss your ideas and experiences with a colleague. Thank you.